In this video, we're going to put what we learned in the previous video to use to scrape top 250 movies from IMDb. So the top 250 movies on IMDb um, are at this URL shown on the slide. So if you would like to follow along with this exercise, I recommend you open up your browser to that page and you're going to see a page that looks something like this. We have data on rank and title of the movies. And then at, next to the titles, uh, we have in parentheses the year the movie was made. We also have the IMDb ratings of these movies. And next to it, you're seeing a column called your rating with no information in it. If you're an IMDb user and you actually rate movies on IMDb, you should be able to see your rating there. I haven't done any of my ratings on IMDb, so that's why you're seeing an empty space there in that column. Now, on the other side of the slide, we're looking at the source code of the web page. And for any web page that you have open in your browser, you can go to one of the menus on top, perhaps the view menu if you're using Chrome, to take a look at the source code for the web page. So you should be able to do this regardless of browser and regardless of web page. Depending on how that web page was made, there may be lots of uh, um, code, the HTML code that you'll see there, or perhaps um, maybe not as much information if it's being generated dynamically from a different source. But for this particular web page, we're seeing a bunch of HTML code. And once again, we don't expect you to be able to read through all of this code, but I want you to try to look for a specific tag in there. So you can do a search or control F and look for the word table in the source code. And you can see that I've highlighted that uh, on the screenshot that I've taken here. That's around line uh, 603 on the source code. So um, underneath that, if you scroll down a little bit, we can see words like rank and then AMP for ampersand. That's how we're representing that uh, sign and plain text and title. And then we see IMDB rating and then we see your rating. And then if we actually scroll down with our eyes even further, we can see the name of our first movie, The Shawshank Redemption at the very bottom of the screenshot here. And you can also see kind of the, its rank and also its IMDB rating, so on and so forth. Um, this is the information that we want to get out. But once again, we're going to use the Arvest package for doing that as opposed to us writing code to directly parse this particular text string that we're seeing here, which is the HTML code. But the important thing to keep in mind is that the information we want out of this page is somewhere hid hidden somewhere in the source code of the web page. Before we can go ahead and scrape the data, the first thing we want to do is to check to see, am I even allowed to scrape the data? Each website has a plain text file that is stored on the back end called robots.txt, which stands for text, um, which tells uh, whether bots are allowed to crawl that web page. So whether you're allowed to programmatically get data out of that web page. Um, there's a package in R called robots.txt, so that's what I've loaded here, that will allow you to actually access that file on any web page given a particular URL. And you can check to see if you're allowed to scrape data using the paths allowed function. If it returns true, that means that you are allowed to do so. Now, we're going to talk a little bit later about just because you're allowed, is it a good idea? Are there any consideration in terms of the ethics or what you're doing of what you're doing? So this true does not necessarily mean it's a great idea. It simply means that you are allowed with um, writing some code to access this data and get it out versus uh, Facebook does not allow this. So if you were to uh, give the URL of Facebook uh, to the same function paths allowed, we're getting false. So if you're curious about, if you're interested in uh, scraping data from a website, this is the place to get started to see, am I even allowed to do that? Now that we have our true, we're gonna move on to what, what our plan is. So. Um, on one side of the slide, you're seeing the web page, a screenshot of the web page, and I've kind of color annotated it. In green, I have highlighted the uh, titles of the movie. So what I want to do is to get that information out. And in my data frame called IMDB Top 250, I'm going to create a new column called title, and I want to put those there. And then the years highlighted in uh, pink are going to go into another column called year and the IMDB ratings highlighted in purple. I'm going to grab those and put them into a uh, column called rating. So ultimately, I want to write some code to access this web page. And then with the data that I extract out of it, I want to organize it in the form of a data frame with three columns, title, year and rating, 
and you guessed it, 250 rows, one per each movie. Our plan is to first read the whole page. So we want to get the source code of the whole page into R first so that then we can parse it so that we're not constantly sending messages back to the web page. We want to save that information as an object in R and then do the parsing locally. And then we have three steps of scrape the movie titles and save as titles, scrape years movies were made in and save as years, scrape IMDb ratings and save as ratings. Once we have these, step number five actually is something you're already familiar with. We have some data, we wanna organize them into a data frame. So we're gonna call our data frame IMDB top 250 with variables title, year, and rating. So step one, read the whole page. In order to read the whole page, we use the read underscore HTML function. So to it, we provide the URL of the page that we want to uh, get data from and note that this URL, we provide it to a, as a character string. So read HTML works just like read CSV, read RDS in the sense that you give it a, 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 um, a, a target to get data from, right? And you say, this is where I want you to get the data from, and then it does so. Now, we're going to save the result of this as page. We could have named it whatever we like, but I'm going to save it as page. And then let's take a look to see what this object is. It's actually a very unfamiliar object. It is not a data frame, it's not a vector, it is something else. So if we take a look at the type of that um, object that we just created, it's a list and it actually has two elements and we need to convert to something a little converted to something a little bit more familiar like a data frame so it's an xml document uh which is kind of the format of the data as it's being stored on the web and what we want to do is we want to take the pieces we want out using the plan that we um outlined and then uh turn this into turn the relevant bits of the information into something a little bit more familiar like a data frame. So now that we have this page object, we have read the whole page. Now what we want to do is to, we wanna get the scrape, the movie titles and save them as titles. So let's take a look. Um, in order to get this information out, what I need to do is I wanna go back to my selector gadget. So I'm gonna go back to the web page and I'm going to click on the movie titles and note that I'm clicking it on them in a way where I'm only selecting the title, not title and year. So you might need to click around a little bit to get to this. And once you get to that, you'll see that the tag that the uh, CSS selector chooses for you is dot title column and then a space and then a. Okay. So I've I'm using that selector gadget extension that I mentioned in the previous video. I'm selecting the movies and I can see that there are 250 movies selected, which is exactly what I want. That's how many movies are on this list. So if you happen to know how many of these items you're uh, trying to get information on, that makes your life easier. And we're going to take a note of the fact that these are stored with a tag called dot title column. C capital, uh, this is uh, case sensitive, and then a space and then A, okay? So we use the selector gadget for this identification, then we go back to R. Using that information we've gotten from the selector gadget, we're going to first start with the um, tech web page source that we had saved as an object called page, and then we're telling R to take, get the nodes out for us. So we're using a uh, function from the Arvest package again called HTML nodes. So the node is uh, called dot title column and then a space and then A. And so we're asking it to take a look at that unfamiliar object and get this information out for us. The result is still an object um, that is of the type uh, XML node set. Still not very familiar, but I can see the number 250 here, which makes me happy. So there are 250 of these things. And if I take a look here, it looks like I have the URLs of the various um, movie, uh, movie pages. So if I wanted to click on those movies one by one, these are the web pages that I would need to go for those. What I need to do though, is I don't want all of this information. I don't care about the URLs of the individual movies. I just want to get the text out of these nodes. So then 
In the next step, I pipe this into the next um, rvest function, which is HTML text. So what it does is it takes a look at each of these nodes and then actually extracts the text out for us. And so I'm finally starting to see something that is of interest to me, which are the 250 movie titles given to me as a vector. So once I have this information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a new vector called titles. So that's that same pipeline that I developed once I know that I'm happy with that pipeline, I'm saving the result as a vector that I'm calling titles. I'm gonna just start in my pocket for the time being and move on to the next step. Uh, in the next step, I'm going to now get the year the movies were made in and save as years. The process will be very similar. Identify the selector using selector gadget, go to R and then get the nodes and then get the text out of the nodes. And then we're gonna see in this case, we need to do a little bit of data cleanup to get the actual numbers out of those instead of the parentheses that they're in. And then again, store it as a vector that we stash away that we can use at the very end of the process to build our data frame. So to scrape the years the movies were made in, I again go back to my browser. I launch the selector gadget app, which uh, brings back that um, kind of the bar at the bottom of my screen that helps me uh, figure out what I've selected. And I click on the years. I'll start with the first one here. And I can see that the years are selected throughout the page. There are 250 elements selected, which is nice. And now I take a note of that tag again, which is dot secondary info, I capital. So secondary info is what I need. Go back to R start with the object that I had saved, which was the entire page source, and then say, I want to extract out the nodes um, that are tagged secondary info. I get something in return and I can see that I'm starting to, what I need is actually here, right? So it is, it says span, the class is secondary info that feels familiar. And then right in here is the text string that I need. So I've gotten this node set out and what I really need is that text um, that is within those span tags. So I'm going to use again the HTML text function from Arvest that gets rid of all of that HTML coding around it and gives me the text. This is exactly what I need, except I know that year is a numerical variable and here it looks like a character string because I have these parentheses bounding those. And there's not a great easy way of selecting just the years and not the parentheses since they're basically stored all together on the web page. So here's an example of where you can't get exactly what you need out of the web page. So you bring into R whatever you can because you have other tools to clean up the data to convert it to what you need. And what you need is a numerical vector called year where we don't have these parentheses decorating these numbers and only the years themselves. So I, I only want 1994 or 1972 from here. How do I go about doing this? We're gonna need to clean up the text. We need to go from 1994 in parentheses to just the number 1994. So I need to remove the open parenthesis and the close parenthesis. That's a little bit of string manipulation that we're gonna learn about here. So we're working with text as data, so character strings, and we're gonna to try to manipulate that. And then once we have gotten rid of those, we are still left with a character string 1994, and then we're gonna change it to a numeric variable, which we've done before, where we've converted things from character strings to numbers, and then told R explicitly to change the data type as well. In order to do the string manipulation in R, we're going to use a package called StringR, which is part of the tidyverse as well. So it provides a cohesive set of functions designed to make working with strings as easy as possible. All of the functions in StringR that we're going to use start with the prefix str underscore. So for example, str remove removes a pattern from a string. For example, if to str remove, the first argument we always give is the string that we want to manipulate. So if that's jello, and we want to remove the pattern that is matched by EL, so just the letters E and L next to each other. As a result, we get JLo. We're basically subtracting the EL from the word JLo. STR replace does something similar, except instead of taking out a pattern, it replaces it with something else. So from JLo, if I want to replace the pattern J with H, then I get hello. 
how are we going to use these? Remember, we had these uh, years in parentheses, so we want to remove the open and close parentheses. So we start with the, uh, we add on to the pipeline that we were building up already, where we grab the nodes and then we took the text out of them. And now I'm going to say, I want to remove the open parentheses first. And then in the next uh, set, we're gonna do the close. But note that I'm doing something a little bit different here. I'm using the str remove function as expected, but instead of giving it just the um, open parenthesis, I have these two backslashes beforehand. So when we're trying to manipulate a character string and the pattern we're trying to match has a special character in it, so like open parentheses, close parentheses, a lot of the punctuation marks, um, we need to um, tell um, R to escape that. So saying that this might have a special meaning to you, but I don't want you to think about that special meaning. I meaning I want you to simply treat that as the character open parenthesis. So we use two backslashes for that. So wherever it matches the open parenthesis, um, it will remove that. And in fact, in the result, we're seeing that the open parenthesis are gone. And then in the next step, we're doing the same thing with the close parenthesis. Remember that to the string R function str remove, earlier I said we would feed a string and a pattern to remove. Here, I have only given the pattern, not the string. Why? Because this is coming uh, from within a pipeline. So the HTML text function in the pipeline already spit out the character strings for us. That's going to be used as the first argument in um, the next step of our pipeline. That's why I didn't have to specifically give that. So we're building this whole thing in a pipeline as we're used to doing so. So now I have my years out as character strings, and the last step, last step is going to be to convert these to numeric data, which I know that I can do with the as numeric function from when we talked about data types and doing explicit coercion of data types. So converting from character, in this case, to a numeric data. And finally, now that I know I have what I want, I'm going to save that as a vector called years. And again, I'm going to stash that in my pocket for later to construct that data frame. The last step of the three column scraping is scraping the ratings and saving that as ratings. So let's take a look again at our page. Go back to the browser now using the selector gadget. Try to click around so you can select the IMDB ratings. The tag that I get for that is strong and I can see that I have 250 elements selected. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, start with that page object again and extract out the nodes defined uh, tagged with strong. And I can see in what it gives out to me that the numbers I want are again buried in there in this object called uh, and this XML node set object. So the numbers I want are there, but I have other stuff around it as well, a bunch of uh, HTML code. So let's go ahead and try that same technique we had where we say, just give me the text. And in fact, when I say, just give me the text that's relevant to me, I am in fact able to see the uh, ratings that I want. The 9.2 matches to the 9.2 for Shawshank Redemption, 9.1 matches to the 9.1 for Godfather, so on and so forth. The one uh, last step here is that these are again character strings because we took out some text, right? So we want to convert these to numeric data as well with the as numeric function. And finally, we're going to save this, the result of this pipeline as a new vector called ratings. So the last step is to create a data frame called IMDB top 250. So at this point, we're done with the web scraping and we can go back to tools we've had prior to this week to create a new data frame, or in this case, a tibble, uh, the tidyverse interpretation of data frames. And I'm going to have three columns in my data frame. One of them is called title, the other one is called year, and the other one is called rating. And for each one of these columns, I'm basically setting them equal to those three vectors that I had stashed away. Now I know that this code looks, I think a little bit confusing because I have title equals titles, year equals years, and rating equals ratings, and it might be a little bit unclear which is which. So the singular form is here I'm using is the column heading, so the variable names. I'm creating three new variables called title, year, and rating. 
And the contents of these variables are those three vectors that I had stashed away from that my scraping projects uh, process. They were called titles, years, and ratings. I could have given it something like vector of titles or list of titles or something like that. So if you think that having your naming structure be too close to each other can be confusing, you're obviously welcome to do that. The way I try to keep this straight in my mind is for my uh, variable names, I always try to use singular words because if you think about it, it's the title of a given movie is what's in each one of the cells. Um, and then for the vectors, I had used plural. So if I take a look now, I have something very familiar to me, a tibble with 250 rows and three columns. In fact, I can take a closer look to this tibble and browse around and I can see that this is exactly the information that I had from uh, the web page organized in a way that I like to see it. Uh, we might also want to clean up or enhance our data further. Let's take a look to see if that's necessary. I can glimpse at the data, and to me, everything looks pretty good here, actually. So I don't really need to do a whole lot of cleaning up. But one thing I am going to do is to add a new variable called rank, because remember, I didn't actually scrape that information 1 through 250. Um, and so I want to actually I, I know that my data currently is in that order, but if I was to ever reshuffle the data in some way, I would lose that information. So I'm going to take my IMDB top 250 data frame, pipe that into mutate and create a new variable called rank, which is going to be just the numbers one through the number of rows. So that's really one through 250. And then I'm using another function called relocate to move ranked uh, to be the first variable. So what relocate does is it's not a select, as in it doesn't eliminate the other variables, but it just moves whatever uh, variables you gave to it to the front of the data frame. So my result looks something like this. So I still have the 250 rows, but this time four columns, the first one being ranked. So I have that information captured as well. Obviously, I could have scraped that information too, but I wanted to show you a little bit of the post-processing process. What's next? I could do a bunch of things with this. I could say which years have the most movies on the list. Um, that's a count uh, thing in dplyr, right? I can start with the IMDB 250 uh, data frame and I can say count the years for me and sort true so that the highest frequency is on top. So 1995 uh, probably predates many, many of you, if not all of you. Uh, let's take a look to see what years, uh, what movies uh, from 1995 1995 were on the list. So I want to filter for year 1995. And I said, print all eight and of uh, eight of them for me. Otherwise, it was printing just the first six on my slides. I had set it up. So here are the top uh, movies of the year 1995. Um, I have seen almost all of these movies. Uh, probably some of them are familiar to you. You may not have seen some of them. Um, so if you're looking for something to watch and you want a little bit of nostalgia, you might try one of these movies. We can also visualize these data, right? So visualize the average yearly rating for movies that made it on the top 250 list over time. Let's see, has that changed over the years? Maybe there's like an increasing pattern, but not really exactly. There's a lot of scatter. It seems like the yearly averages have stayed constant. How did I calculate this? I started with the IMDb 250 data frame and grouped things by year. And then for each year, I calculated the average uh, score or the average rating and basically plotted those. So these last few slides were just to show that once you have the data in R, you know exactly what you did do uh, what to do with it you've already done all of that over the last few weeks so today uh, this week what we're trying to emphasize is what if you don't have the data in a rectangular format to start piping into your dplyr or ggplot2 uh, code how do we harvest that data from the web and then save it as a data frame so that we can do everything that we know uh, to do with data frames